Hello, I'm Mehak Boyan. Today I'm going to read Charles Dickens, written by Jim and the Bridge. Let's get started. Charles Dickens. Charles Dickens was a writer who lived in England in the 18s. 8,000s. 18,000. He wrote over 220 novels. And in his books, he created some famous and well-known characters. He wrote about poor people, rich people, kind people, and wicked people. And many of the characters were based on people he had met while he was growing up. Charles Dickens wrangled at his desk. Charles Dickens was very interested in how people lived and how they behaved. He wrote about what life was like living in London at that time. A London soup kitchen serving food to the poor in 1858. The Dickens Family Charles Dickens was born on 7 February 1812 in Portsmouth. Charles' father, John Dickens, was a clerk in the Navy Pay Office and was to pay wages to sailors on board ships and also the workers on the docks. The Dickens family moved many times because of John Dickens' job, usually to towns on the coast where the navy ports were like many families at this time. Charles' parents had lots of children and Charles had seven brothers and sisters. Portsmouth in the 800s, thousands, in the 1800s, in the 19th century. People didn't own houses unless they were very rich. They rented them instead. John Dickens earned enough money to rent a whole house for his family and have a maid servant live with them. In 1822, when Charles was 10 years old, John Dickens was transferred to London and the family lived in the Carnan town. In the 19th century, Carnan town was a village outside London surrounded by fields. Charles' parents liked to have the best of everything. The best clothes, the best furniture, and the best food. If you did have that much money, you ate food like potatoes, cheese, bread, and thin porridge called gruel. If you did have money, you could pay for food like meat and fish. John Dickens and his wife Elizabeth spent more money than they earned. Sometimes they had to, 
to sell pieces of furniture to pay their food bills. He had to start work to earn some money. In the early 19th century, most of children worked if they were poor from families. Some small boys, as young as five years old, worked in chimney swamps and climbed up inside of chimneys to clean them. Others swept the streets. Many children worked in the factories, soon sacks and or baking wood. Jobs were hard and sometimes dangerous. Charles was not from a poor family, so he'd never worked before. He instead he he had gone to school. But as he was the eldest boy in the family. He had to work now. So his parents found him in a job in a shoe polish factory. He was only 12 years old. Children working in a brick factory. The shoe polish factory. The f shoe fo polish factory, words blackie, was near the River Thames in London. For six days in a week, Charles worked from eight in the morning and six at night, sticking labels on pots of black shoe polish. The factory was a dark, dirty and crumbling building and Charles hated the work. He described the factory as a crazy tumble town old house overrun with rats. Charles paid six shillings in a week. Today, he is only, this is only 30 pence. But at time, this was enough money to buy food and pay for somewhere to sleep. Somewhere to sleep. Charles did not keep the money he earned. He gave it all to his parents. The street in London in the in the one thousand and eight hundreds. As well as working for ten hours a day, Charles walked three miles to and find from the factory. Gas lamps lit the street in the centre of London. But there was no lightning on the country roads between London and Clarendon Town. Charles started his job in the winter. Hard and town. Charles started, so he had to walk in the dark. The roads were thick with mud and when it rained, and slippery and frozen when it was cold. Prison! Only a few days after, Charles started to work at the shoe polish factory. His father, 
John Dickens was arrested because he couldn't pay, pay for his bills. He was put in Manchester, a dehorous prison in Southwark, London. At that time, it was common for the whole families to live in the prison until the money had been paid. What is this is what happened to the Dickens family, Manchester Prison. Manchester Prison was split into different parts. One part was for the criminals and the other was people like John Dickens who owned money. In this part of the prison there were eight large houses in total of 56 rooms. The rooms are very small. John Dickens, his wife, and six of their children had to live together in one of these rooms. There were lots of people in the prison and it was a very crowded, dirty place. The main gates of prison were locked from 10 at night until 8 in the morning. Half an hour before the gates were locked, an officer walked around in the prison, ringing a bell to tell visitors to live. If a prison visitor didn't get out of time, they have to spend the night in prison. <clears throat> Prisoners were not locked in their rooms. They could walk around the prison whenever they wanted. And they had to do their own cooking and cleaning. Each element had to pay money to use the prison kitchen to boil and cook meals. Charles did live in the prison. He earned enough money from working at the factory to pay in one room in a lodging house in Camden Town. He also had to pay food for his family while they're in prison. On Sundays, he went to the prison to see his family, but he did not like going there. He described the prison as slimy and rotten. School. When Charles was 13, he left the factory and went back to school. In the early 19th century, children didn't have to go to school. If you go, you had to pay. John Dickens had some money left from his indicate after he'd pay his bills and he could now afford to send Charles school to egg again. John Dickens wanted to Charles to be educated and become a gentleman. But Charles didn't like the school and he thought the teaching was terrible. He described the head teacher as the most ignorant 
that I ever done. The boy were over there were over two hundred boys at the school. They sat in rows on wooden benches with a wooden desk desks. Paper was very expensive. So children used to write by scratching the piece of slate. The teacher was very strict. And uh, if the boy didn't behave, he could hit with a stick. After two years, Charles Dick was 15 years old when he had to leave the school again and go back to work. School's classes were large and pupils sat rows. Charles the writer. Charles wasn't interested in the law, but he was interested in the people he saw in the court. The criminals Criminals, criminals, and the victims of crime. When he was eighteen, Charles became a reporter. He went to the law courts and wrote about what happened there. When Charles was twenty-one years old. His first short story was published. He didn't get paid for it, but it helped him known as a writer. He also wrote for a newspaper about what London life was like. Charles wrote for a London newspaper called the evening charters. Charles' first full-length book was published in 1836 when he was 24 years old. This time he was paid £100. It would have taken Charles over three and a half years to earn the same amount of money working as a law clerk, and he now had enough money to move out of the rooms he lived with his parents and brothers and sisters live on his own. Charles' first book by the boys. Charles Dickens' family. In 1836, Charles married a young girl called Catherine. By this time, he earn, was earning lots of money as the, a writer and he and his wife could afford to rent a whole house in a good area of London called the Blue Sunbury. Charles and Catherine had 10 children with a large family to support, Charles needed the most of the money he earned. But he always gave money to his parents, brothers and sisters. In the 19th century, there 
was no television or radio and families entertained themselves by reading to one another or playing the piano and singing. Charles and Catherine had enough money to see plays in the theatre and go music concerts. This was very different from Charles' life at the shoe polish factory. Charles reading to his daughters 